So I'm gonna go ahead and do a very quick demo. I'll do a quick underpainting and then show how the transparent colors lay in on top of it. I got one of uh, these G.H. Simpkins treckle panels. G.H. is George Henry. It's not Greg Simpkins, it's my dad, who's awesome. All right, so we have a primed canvas panel with wood, wrapped with canvas, primed with gesso, and I lightly sanded it with 220 grit um, sandpaper. I'm gonna use one of my Simpkins dagger brushes to do a lot of the work. And one of my beat up old cat's tongues to do some blending. I don't know what I'm gonna paint here. I just wanted underpaintings that we could tint. So let's just start painting and see what happens. Now I heard for them to make these brushes that Courtney had to wrestle a bear and kill it. Which is very sad for the bear, but the bear was going to kill her, so she decided to kill it instead. And for years they have a supply of hair to make these brushes. And that's a fact. What I really want is a gradient, so I can show how the transparents lay in. Now I hear when Dabs and Myla make their brushes, it's not as brave as when Courtney makes brushes because they just kill koala bears, not like a big grizzly bear. That's kind of wussy when you think about it. Those things sleep most of the day, so it's kind of like stabbing somebody in the back. Of course, the hair I use is completely synthetic. It's from a crazy weasel called the synthetic weasel. They track those guys down and they just pay them for their fur though. They just pluck themselves. They don't have to die for their hairs, which is amazing. It's cruelty-free brushes on my side. Most companies only use cruelty brushes. They don't like animals like we do. And they don't like their mothers either. So I'm gonna use some yellow iron oxide and I'm gonna use the red iron oxide from the transparent um, the code set. And um, I'm gonna use these to glaze in some color over my <laughs> monochromatic underpainting. Oh, there it is. These are really easy to open for most people. You need help over there? Kind of amateur, don't you think? I'm using um, Trek L number 16 Golden Teflon Extra Long uh, Filbert. That's a great brush. I'm using it a lot on the nine foot painting I'm working on. The long brushes help me on the bigger painting. No, it's good for putting in doing all kinds of different techniques. But right now I'm just putting down some water. So what I've got here is some red iron oxide, a little bit of yellow iron oxide. I'm just gonna layer it in there, kind of messy. My blending brush, paint right over everything. All the shadows hold up. The highlights stay where they're supposed to. Just tint it. Very important to dry in between the glazing layers. Um, it kind of locks the layer down. I'm gonna put some just straight pigment. Sorry, straight fluid acrylic over it. Just blend it out. This is transparent paint. It's gonna stay transparent on top. Blend it on, it just tints the whole thing. Have some more of that red, that mouth, to the nose area. We just got in a fight with a dog. We destroyed that dog. So he's got some red on his mouth. I like dogs, but rabbits gotta defend himself. 
if that was wet, I'd be smearing this everywhere. <laughs> Good thing it's not. And at this point, um, to get colors to pop, if I'm just using the transparents, I'll bring back the white, because I'll never have that pure white in there when I'm finished with the painting anyways. And I'll boost up the, the section I'm going to hit again with highlight. And then I'll glaze over that again. So it's just a series of highlights and glazing over those highlights at this point. And I can even come through with shadow at the end. To pretend I have techniques I don't really use. I don't like do this. But oh, that's a cool technique. I don't really use that. I don't know who anybody who does, but let's do it for video because it looks cool. Transparent paints are so much fun to work with. You can immediately change the mood of a piece. Despite adding a little bit to the color. And it happens really fast. And it's like, oh, you blended that green into that red. It's like, not really. I just blended the edge out over the top of that red. Sealed it with blow dryer. You should see the true nature of this rabbit. Like most rabbits, they have upside down vampire teeth. Which is used to uh, drain the blood from their victims while they sleep. Which is usually small children. And small dogs. I'm trying to get the world to realize, get a real dog. I'm using a number one round. Let's get some little details in. Everybody thinks rabbits are sweet and cute and fluffy, but they really are dangerous. That's why we put this little black rabbit on the side of... Oh, it's white rabbit here, excuse me. It's a white rabbit, but technically it's the black rabbit of Inley. Which is the black rabbit of death from Watership Down. I'm gonna mix a little bit of uh, burnt umber with red iron oxide, make it darker wash. And the burnt umber is more opaque, but with the transparent red oxide, it's still gonna go on translucent, which will still give me a good way to glaze. Drop in some shadow. Just a little bit of water on it this time. You know, as you've seen most of the time, just a little bit of water will help blend it. It's always important to put splatters of snow on bunnies. Really angry if it's too warm outside. Detail brushes really hold up good, which is a good plus. Get in there and do all the little hairs and highlights. It's been one of my favorite things about these brushes. There's Bradical Bradley. That's a stupid name. I do not want to keep that. My grandpa was taken out by a rabbit. Rest in peace. 